Hello and welcome to the NASCAR Regional Pro Cup Series for your eighth race of the season here at the Lonesome Pine Speedway. This is an interesting racetrack and it should be a great race. Now before the Regional Pro Cup Series comes out for their main event here today, we are going to be looking at the NASCAR Lights. They're going to be running their event first. So let's take a look at the starting grid. Rick Witt leads them off in first place to his outside is Jace Adapter who's trying to get a little bit of a head start. There is a three-way tie for the points lead going into today's event. We'll see how that turns out as Rick Witt is going to get a great start. Jace Adapter really did not lay the pedal down. I think it might be because he got too much of a start before the uh, the uh, green flag waved. Biggie Spence is going to take second place. Dylan Young going into third. Rick Witt, newer driver to the series, made his debut last week at Buffalo Downs. He's going to be running the rest of the season in this number 95 machine, so great qualifying effort last week. Hopefully this time he can get the good finish that he was hoping for. A little further back is one of those drivers tied for the points lead. It's Max Watson, the 046. He had a strong beginning of the year, but things started to taper off once we got to the halfway point, and everyone's been starting to catch him. He has two wins under his belt, much like Norman Jason. But he's going to have to really work his way up through the field if he wants to have a successful race. He's passing James Silverfox at the moment, though many drivers have passed James Silverfox this year. And now he's working his way on Cody Hagen. So we'll see if uh, Max Watson can make anything of it. He might make it three wide with uh, Sean Angel, but it looks like he decides to back out. Speaking of three wide, Kate Skirvin, Alex Pedro, Jace Adapter. Now Joshua Collard's going to take Skirvin's place. This is not the track to be doing it. These lanes are not very wide. There's markings for four lanes, but only about two of them are usable. Contact with Jace Adapter. He's going to have to be careful. Now Norman Jason trying to go underneath. Contact's made, and Alex Pedro is going to get turned around. The contact with Cody Hagen and Jace Adapter. So Pedro looks like this is going to end his run for now. And more trouble. Cody Hagen, car number 27, is going to get to the wall later on. Max Watson to the bottom there. I think, uh, yeah, he's starting to lose that main pack. He might have gotten a little bit of contact from the uh, previous pack, or maybe he just backed off a little bit. But Cody Hagen is going to get slowed down as well. Dylan Young passing Biggie Spencer for second place. Dylan Young is a driver in the Utica Home Track Series, along with the NSCRA and several other divisions. He's a He's a driver with a lot of experience. Decided to come back down to the regional level just to uh, hone his ability some more. Driving that DJ Curtis number 52. And he's had a great car so far. He's been running some very fast lap times and he's starting to catch up to Rick Witt. So we'll have to see if he can catch up to him in time or if Rick Witt can uh, either pull away or hold him off. Sean Angel, car number 69, won last week's event at uh, Buffalo Downs. It was his first victory in the NASCAR lights. However, this weekend's not going as smoothly. He's pretty far back in the pack, sitting behind Jace Adapter. So he's got a long ways to go to uh, work his way up through the field. Right behind him is James Silverfox in the 077. Silverfox hasn't had the best season, but he's actually still in championship contention. If he can just keep it strong for this race, he might have a shot at it. But uh, if he does, it will be an outside chance. Sean Angel also uh, has a good chance at it as well. Same with Jace Adapter. So a lot of championship competitors running toward the back of the pack today. One of them that isn't, Julian D'Artagnus Jr., who is one of the cars tied for the lead. He sits up near the front in fourth place. So Julian D'Artagnus Jr., who was the winner at Kalamazoo, hoping to get a second career win under his belt. He, when he won the Kalamazoo race, he transferred over, but he failed to qualify for the Regional Pro Cup event. He's currently the only driver in the Regional Pro Cup series with a point count of zero. And right now, Kate Skirvin's starting to uh, make the pass underneath. D'Artanius, though not successful in Regional Pro Cup, he might have a strong run at the championship in this series, as he is one of the favorites going into the later ha latter half of the season. Rick Witt is still in the race lead, but Dylan Young is catching up with only a short amount of time left. Witt trying to keep on the bottom to keep him from passing. The bottom line is the strongest line, and it is where Dylan Young has been really fast. So Rick Witt needs to make sure he keeps that guarded. 
as uh, it looks apparent that Dylan Young does have the faster race car. He's been laying down some really fast times these past couple of laps, which have been a little bit quicker than Rick Witt. But Witt trying his best. Oh, no, he gets a little too high up out of the uh, exit of the turn. Dylan Young is going to go underneath for the diving pass, and Young will get it. So Dylan Young will go back into the race lead, and he's staying low to prevent Rick Witt from making the crossover move. That's a pretty smart maneuver. Rick Witt's starting to lose tons of momentum as Biggie Spencer is now on his tail. And it looks like Spencer is going to try and make the pass. He's up, up. He can't do it just yet. As we go back to Norman Jason, car number 89. Probably the oldest driver in the Das Car Lights. He's been running up in competition for the championship ever since race one where he won at Utica Rome Speedway. Now, Norman Jason hasn't won a championship in ages. I can't even remember when. So, for him to be in contention is already amazing enough. What if he were to win the championship? Oh, no, we have some trouble. Kate Skirvin, car number 07, seems to have some mechanical issue. We're not exactly sure what, but uh, Skirvin was running in third place. Well, sorry, fourth. Um, unfortunately, Kate Skirvin, who had such a great run going for, is going to have to uh, pull that car back to pit road. What a shame. Maybe next week. Biggie Spencer will take Rick Witt's spot in second place. Biggie Spencer is one of the uh, up-and-coming rookie drivers. He came in at the midway point, replacing Dion Scott, who did not have a good time in the 64 machine. Dion Scott's more of a road racer. Spencer was able to uh, handle these short tracks a little bit better. But out near the front, Dylan Young only has one lap to go in this lights event, and he's got a huge lead over Biggie Spencer. Spencer took way too much time trying to get by Rick Witt, and it's just not going to... Uh, go in his favor. Dylan Young going through turn four. Comes to the line. This is going to be his first career to NASCAR Lights victory and he will transfer over to the 95 car in the main event for the regional Pro Cup Series event. So congratulations to Dylan Young. A great effort by him today as he pulls that car back to pit road and gets ready to suit up in that number 95 car. Let's see what the race results were. Dylan Young is your winner. He goes to the main event followed by Biggie Spencer, Rick Witt, Julian D'Artagnan Jr. with a great run, Joshua Collard in 5th, followed by Norman Jison, Nicholas Guerra, Sean Angel, Jace Adapter, James Silverfox, Cody Hagen, Max Watson, Alex Pedro as the last car to finish on the lead lap. Kate Skirvin actually got that car back out on track, though she was leaking a lot of fluid. She finished 3 laps down. Let's take a look at your point standings to see who's still in competition for the championship. D'Artagnan Jr. has a 5-point lead over Jace Adapter, followed by Norman Jison, Max Watson, Sean Angel, and James Silverfox. That's everyone who can mathematically win the championship. After that, from Logan York back, they all cannot win. They're just going for the wins and to see if they can make the regional Pro Cup Series event, or they're no longer driving. There will be no qualifier event. Let's go to the main event. Let's take a look at your starting lineup for the Lonesome Pine event. Eric and Rage has to pull Jeffrey Finguy to his outside. There's a couple of surprise runners up near the front, like Ian Dutta and Skylar Dixon in 10th place. And we have a pretty packed field. Joshua Michaels is in 13th. He's replacing Ray Takuda for the remainder of the season due to uh, poor performance on Takuda's behalf. 35 drivers battling for one victory in a 50-lap spectacle. So this should be a great event. Joseph Vanesto rounding out the field. He's been having a rough couple of races. But back to the front of the pack. Eric and Rage, car number 42, is sitting on the pole. Last week did not fare too well for him. At the Buffalo Downs Fieldway, he had several different problems with that 42 car, most importantly a wreck, and he also spent a lot of time on pit road. Finn guy gets kicked up to the outside lane, Ian Dutta going to take the second place spot, and he's going to try and lead his first ever laps in the regional Pro Cup Series, but Eric and Ray is going to keep out front. Jordan Culp is your points leader going into this race, but he's lost that lead significantly. The rest of the field has caught up, and that's not good with only a couple of races to go. He needs a solid finish today if he wants to secure a run at the championship. He's currently running about mid-pack at the moment, so there's still room for improvement for Jordan Culp. But I don't see why he wouldn't be able to do it. He just needs to make sure he stays out of trouble. Culp passes Dominic Cousins to the inside as Trevor Germain makes the pass on Ian Dutta for second place. Trevor Germain... 
one of the drivers that hasn't been stealing the headlines, but has been keeping consistent, and he's been staying in the top 10 in points. Trevor Germain could be a dark horse entry for the championship, and I mean that because he not only doesn't have any wins, he isn't in a Jordan Culp scenario where he's in the first place in points, so Jermaine still has a chance, but he's got to make it. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, Dylan Young making some contact with Alex DeMarco. Dylan Young won the lights event to get into this race. And at the current moment, not making the most of it. He's currently near the back of the pack with Jake Williams. And there's Derek Pemberton. Pemberton is one of those drivers that needs to work their way to the front because he's competing for a championship. And if he's this far behind, it doesn't look too good for him. Dylan Young hoping to make the most out of this start. Nick Pericles has been turning a couple of heads out on track. He's in the top 10, which uh, Pericles has not done a lot this year. Usually he ends up into another race car. But Nick Pericles uh, maybe turning over a new leaf and uh, having that 12 Dodge run very well as he's already working his way on Ian Dutta. I've never seen this 12 car fly this quick before. So Pericles must be absolutely ecstatic over the radio as he attempts to catch Dutta. Derek Pemberton, as we mentioned, running near the back of the pack, battling with Dominic Cousins, who, if you're near Dominic Cousins, you're usually not near a victory. I, not, not to make fun of Dominic Cousins, but this season has been pretty uh, off for him. But now Pemberton stuck to the outside line as Henry Nova in the 07 tries to make the pass. Same for Paul Swanson, the triple zero. So Pemberton, a lot of improvement needs to happen as the only championship competitor near him is P.J. Williams in that 38 car. Colin Bartell, car number 66, so close to winning at Bearfield. Ran out of time at Buffalo Downs. At Lonesome Pine today, he's hoping that the same thing doesn't happen again. He's sitting up there in about the fifth place position. And he's having a great race. He just hopes that he can get himself to victory lane. As a top five is nice, but a win is even sweeter. That will really help him out for the championship. Jeffrey Finn guy has lost quite a few positions since the start. He's dropped out of the top ten. And he's being caught up to by the Aurelio brothers, the 82 and the 92. Jeffrey Finn guy. Um, I don't believe he's actually won a race this year. He's been trying, though. He's been trying desperately to get that victory, but he's always come up just short. However, it's been good for his points run, as he's up there and contends for the championship. He just needs to make sure he doesn't drop too far back, as Jordan Culp has gotten by him as well. Zachary Fitzwater, one of the other surprise drivers having a great run. Fitzwater has had some trouble qualifying for these races, and usually when he does, he's been more of a back marker. But today, running in the top ten, nice and solid, so... Zachary Fitzwater having a great effort today. Same with Pericles and Dutta, as we've mentioned. Um, Fitzwater driving that 72 machine. It's kind of a... Looks like a lower version of the uh, John Sedino machine in the Utica Home Track Series. It's got some, even has some sponsorship from Utica Rome Speedway, which uh, he hoped that he, he was hoping that he could get that car a good run at Utica Rome, but unfortunately got caught up in an incident. Pericles is going to make the pass on Ian Dutta. And that's going to give Pericles one extra position on track as he works his way to catching Colin Bartell. Speaking of catching up, Eric and Rage has caught up to lap traffic. And Trevor Germain has caught up to Eric and Rage. So this could be an interesting battle near the front as Paul Swanson is the last car on the lead lap. Eric and Rage trying to get past him. Swanson has a pretty bad reputation after uh, Bearfield when he drove his triple zero car into the grandstands. The lawsuits on that are still ongoing, and uh, I don't think they will see solace anytime soon. As now Eric and Rage about to lap two noteworthy drivers, P.J. Williams and Derek Pemberton. No, oh, there was some contact between Pemberton and Young, and that almost collected Eric and Rage. Trevor Germain is going to catch up because of that. So and Rage has a lot on his plate to deal with. See if he can keep cool under the pressure as uh, Trevor Germain is definitely not going to make it easy, and Dylan Young has been pretty feisty all race long. He does not want to get lapped as he almost gets into Alex Smith. This could be a three-wide battle, but it looks like Eric and Rage is going to do the smart thing, not get involved with that. He doesn't want to wreck it too early. Logan York, car number 43, 
fitting in 10th place, having a great effort today, the young rookie. Moved his way up from the light series after race 5, replacing uh, Alex Tanker, and he's had some great runs ever since, so... Logan, well, it's a shame that uh, he wasn't here from the beginning, because he might have been a championship eligible driver. I, I could feel it from this guy. He knows how to run this car as he's running right behind Vincent Allen. Alex Hawkins having a great run, sitting in the third place position. He's getting kind of swamped by this lap traffic. P.J. Williams is passing him underneath, and Mick Pericles is coming up ever closer. In fact, everyone's starting to catch up. There's Zachary Fitzwater, who made some really good passes, I noticed, and has gotten by Colin Bartell. I think Ian Dutton might be catching up as well, yes. So Alex Hawkins going to lose the spot to Nick Pericles. Now he might lose it to Pemberton. And Fitzwater is also trying his hand at uh, getting underneath. As now Vincent Allen trying to work his way up to the, into the mix back there. As he's starting to draft with Ian Dutta and trying to make the pass even. Fitzwater makes it by Alex Hawkins and Colin Bartell tries as well. Car in the wall, Paul Swanson. The triple zero car he's been saying has been handling really poorly. He's not happy with the way this car has been racing. And uh, it's just been an uphill battle for Swanson. He's currently the second to last car on the racetrack as he might be the last car now as uh, Pemberton makes the pass. So Swanson, not a lot of things going right in the second half of the season for him. As we take a look at Jordan Culp, car number five. He has cracked the top ten by passing Anthony McCurry and Skyler Dixon. And if you can see a little bit back there, you saw a little glimpse of Joshua Michaels, who's uh, closing in on the uh, top ten, that 0-4 machine. Great effort for him. But Jordan Culp went from mid middle of the pack toward the front of the pack, and that's a great effort for him. Anthony McCurry is also a potential championship competitor, though he's been more of a dark horse. As Skyler Dixon also trying to reclaim his spot. Jordan Culp going to lose that 10th uh, place position, but there's still time to get it back. Eric and Rage still out front as he's trying to lap Henry Nova in the 07. Trevor Germain has not given up, though, though uh, he has gotten held up a little bit by this lap traffic. I think DeMarco might let him go, and uh, I'm not sure if Nova will do the same since he's already lapped down. Real big shout-out to Dylan Young, who, despite running near the back, just will not let Eric and Rage pass him. He wants to finish this race on the lead lap. No buts about it. As uh, he's trying to catch up to Jackson Darby, last week's winner of Buffalo Downs. Uh, not the run he was hoping for. Some trouble. Zachary Robinson's got a problem, and I think they're saying it's terminal. Car number 09 is going to be the first casualty of today's race. Um, they're not sure what the issue is. Something with the wheel. So uh, that it could be something uh, related to the axle. I'm not sure if he made any contact with anyone or if there was just a... Uh, something wrong with uh, the construction of it. And whoa! Car number 42 into the wall! That's the leader! And Trevor Germain is going to make his move and get by him. Erica Ray's got stuck to that outside wall. And it looks like the lead has changed hands. As now Nick Pericles going for second spot. Trevor Germain, now your race leader. I don't think he's ever been near this close to the lead before. I think the best he's ever done was maybe about a uh, out of fifth place. He makes it three wide with Jackson Darby and Seth Cole. And look at that. He's going to gain a lot of ground on Eric and Rage. As, and Rage has to now deal with three lap cars. What a professional move by Trevor Germain. S3 Motorsports was considering putting him in a Utica Home Track Series car. We'll have to see if that can materialize someday. We take a look back at Logan York who has moved up through the field and is catching up to Ian Dunn now. So Logan York just continues to impress out on track today. As wait a second, Vincent Allen trying to make a good battle underneath. Vincent Allen was the winner at the Scotia Speed World. And uh, he's been looking for that second career victory to get that boost in the points. He's been relatively low in the standings due to a slow start. But uh, had he not had those uh, couple races where he missed, he might, be, uh, he might have been a big factor for the championship. As Anthony McCrary making a dive bomb move through turn three and four. And he's going to get the pass as well. So easy come, easy go for Logan York as uh, he's going to lose a couple spots. Nick Pericles has made it by Eric and Rage, who's uh, starting to struggle. But look at this. The lap traffic is starting to pass Trevor Germain, and we could have an upset. Nick Pericles might have a shot at this win, as Seth Cole is trying to work his way underneath to get the lap back. 
And Pericles has been really strong on the inside line all day. But here comes Derek Pemberton trying to throw a monkey wrench into this. We don't have many laps to go. So it's time to get to the front. And if Pericles can do it, that would be an amazing victory for him. As he's yet to be graced with victory lane, I don't think in any series. But Trevor Germain, running to the high side. He hasn't been keeping that bottom lane covered, but Nick Pericles has been having trouble running it low. But here we go. Pericles giving it his all. Can he do it? And Germain shuts the door. You'll have to try again. You can't let Trevor Germain get too far ahead of him. Anthony McCreary, car number 34, has just been going like a rocket. He passed several cars so far, and he's already caught up to Alex Hawkins and is going to put him down one spot. As McCrory, continuing on track, can he gain any more positions as he's been running some pretty fast lap times? Of course, for McCrory, this car starts coming together in the late stages of the event, but this should be a solid point stay if he can just keep that car running to the finish. As he continues on track, we take a look at Eric and Rage, who's been losing positions, not been able to get near the front of the pack, as Zachary Fitzwater tries to uh, make him his next target. Fitzwater's been having a great day as well, just, uh, just to throw that out there. And Rage hasn't been dropping like a rock, but... Uh, oh no, we have some trouble! Jamie DeFalo is... Uh, blowing up on the inside and it looks like DeFalo with only two laps to go is going to be out of the race but Trevor Germain has put some ground between he and Nick Pericles he's trying to lap Seth Cole but I'm not sure if he's going to catch him in time as Trevor Germain what an effort he is going to win today at the Lonesome Pine Speedway what a great run by Jermaine, and unfortunate loss by uh, Eric and Rage. So Trevor Jermaine getting his first career victory, I think any series. As we take a look at these race results. Trevor Jermaine is your winner, followed by Nick Pericles and Zachary Fitzwater with unbelievably great efforts. Eric and Rage in fourth, still a solid finish for him, though not a victory. Vincent Allen, Ian Dutta, Anthony McCurry, Alex Hawkins. Colin Bartell and Skylar Dixon, your top 10. Followed by Logan York. Dominic Cousins, a 12th place. Followed by Chris Washer, Jordan Culp, Nathan Minizuki, Jeffrey Finguy, Michael Aurelio, Jake Williams, James Shelley, Joseph Anesto goes from last to 20th. Joshua Michaels in his first start, 21st. Robert Piet, Chris Aurelio, Prudence Littlejohn, Dylan Young, Jackson Darby, and Henry Nova were the last cars in the lead lap. Actually, Seth Cole was uh, too. But uh, DeMarco, Williams, Smith, Pemberton, and Swanson all went a lap down. DeFalu and Robinson were both out of the race. Let's take a look at your top 20 in points, see who's locked in. Though next week, all 35 cars will be able to race. The last race with a qualifier will be the final event at Daytona. Chris Washer and Jordan Culp tie at the top of the charts as Washer beat Culp by one position. Trevor Germain bumps up to third in points, one point back from those guys. Then Finn Guy, McCrory, your top five. Nathan Minizuki. Vincent Allen, Colin Bartel, Robert Piette, and Derek Pemberton could be some long shot entries. Eric and Rage, Alex Hawkins, PJ Williams really dropped in the standings down the 13th. Jackson Darby, despite the win, 14th. Joseph Onesto, 15th. Followed by James Shelley and Zachary Robinson. After that, you cannot win the championship. So only 17 drivers are still eligible. Henry Nova, Jamie DeFalo, Prudence Littlejohn round out your top 20. Everyone else is not locked in. They will have to qualify their way in. Next week, if we had a qualifier event, all 35 cars will make the race, though. So. Next week, we're going to the Myrtle Beach Speedway in South Carolina. should be a great event. And if, if it's anything to go by, the Utica Home Truck Series has some pretty wild, wreck-filled races there. We might see similarly for that race. So thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.